Hey guys, uh, Michelle Fix It, uh, June 22nd, 2023. So I just finished up a little video, like leaving Georgetown, getting gas, and then um, met this awesome guy who was like voluntarily just doing stuff because like that's what he wanted to do because he has two jobs and he was like, hey, I'm bored boss man can I like do some stuff and so then I was like intrigued by his little pressure washer or circle guy and I completely misjudged him I thought he was like I don't know I thought he had like an MHIC because I saw the truck there and I was super duper confused and then like turns out he likes anime or something and so I was like look I have a bartering system and like hang on I'm gonna switch you guys you guys can kind of see well you don't get to see very much hang on let me fix your thing there we go now you get a little bit of something um, so I was like, look, I've got a bartering system. He's like, oh yeah, I got a like Instagram and a this and a that and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, look, uh, I don't know about these other things that you're talking about, but like, I'm really social media dumb. And, uh, like I will help you figure out how to make your costume for the, the commie thing. Not, oh, that sounds bad. Hang on. Um, commie con, that one. Um, thank you, Big Bang. <laughs> I appreciate the, uh, the reference because I, if I did not watch Big Bang at some point, which I did watch a fair amount of Big Bang, and like I loved it, and like that was in my closeted as Aspie phase of life. Um, but, 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 um, yeah. So he wants to make some type of costume, and like I was like, yeah, I make duct tape co duct tape costumes, and he's like, for real? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like I, I mean, I do. I didn't say I have pictures, but like I literally do. I've done like Superwoman and Wonder Woman with someone, and then like we did. Oh, geez, the Pink Princess, the Sleeping Beauty one. Oh, wanted to do that one year. Um, and then, who else did we do? Oh, we did uh, Belle, like Beauty and the Beast Belle. Um, so I don't know how I like figure out the bottoms for him because I'm, I'm better with like tutus and stuff. Um, and I almost resurrected that talent uh, a couple Halloweens ago and like Husband Cat would have totally done it. But then we, I just ran out of time. Uh, but maybe this year I'll make some more handmade costumes because like it was fun and like Izzy's older and I mean it's always hard for me to make my costume because I am the actual person um, and so like if I have a person to make a costume on then it's totally different but he couldn't pull up the picture so I couldn't tell him if I could do it or not but I'm pretty sure there are very few things that I can't DIY um, and so yeah I am hopeful now that that guy will find me on YouTube place and because that's like the only one that I have that's like out there right now um it's not even really out there because today's publication day um and I was like yeah I'm gonna do like a video every day he's like really I'm like yeah like I've, I've got like a month left a month of videos like socked away and he was like kind of impressed so I guess that's gonna work out well maybe I don't know um because I did see somewhere when I like tried to lightly look at the stuff where it was like you should do postings at least, you know, like once a week and do it on a certain day so your audience can like remember it and stuff. But like for me, um, no, they have that delayed publication thing and I down to the time that I want to like release stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to start off with just one video a day, maybe if they're short videos and you'll get a couple and no more than three hours maximum content, period. Okay. Because I don't want you guys getting all obsessed with like the happies and then forgetting to be productive cats. Um, yeah, I'm gonna act like so. My basic strategy in life has always been like, even if you're a small guy, uh, pretend that you're a big guy, talk like you're a big guy, and eventually you might be a big guy. So I'm going to pretend that I am going to be like super awesome with my YouTubiness. Oh man, I gotta pay for this stupid robe. This is so obnoxious. Ugh. Back home, you do not pay for roads. I mean, it's a tunnel, but like even the tunnels, you don't pay for the tunnels. Can somebody like really do a systems check and find out when this thing have finished being paid for? Because this is just like a money maker for the Be More. Because like that kind of sounds obnoxious. Oh, and there's a cruise thing. I've never been on a cruise thing. I'd like to do that, but then like it seems like a petri dish of like germs. Um, so I don't know. I'm like interested in a lot of stuff, but I'm very restrictive. Um, not just the whole time money equation because I've had lots and lots of money and lots and lots of time at different times in my life. Um, so I'm like capable of doing all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but yeah. Oh, and uh, just as a matter of perspective, 
I am not keeping like two or three car lengths distance between myself and this uh, Sentra, this Nissan Sentra with like tags that are confusing, maybe like Arkansas tags. I don't know. If I get closer because like I try to respect people's boundaries and privacy and stuff and I don't like when people get all on my butt. And look, there you go. You're just, oh, that was an adequate space. Okay, I'm not going to grumpy you because that was not grumpy. Oh, it's Tennessee. Hi, Tennessee. What are you doing up here? Yeah, I have like little conversations with vehicles in my in my head. And like the VW, the Rotan or Rotan or whatever it is, like those are such a little niche thing. I don't see them very often. I just call them VW vans, but they're cute. Um, oh, and husband cat kind of wants a Durango. Husband cat wants either a big fancy truck that he's gonna injure, and then I'm gonna get mad at him because I care about vehicles like people care about people. I also care about people and I also care about houses and animals. Um, and systems and motor. I don't know. I'm all about like being nice to things and it just is a very broad spectrum of be nice to all these things. Um, but yeah, I'm just respectful of boundaries because I would say that I am one car link ahead of this person right now and I'm infringing upon additional spaces. And look, the multi-window closed thing, I don't know why the Trailblazer is making my phone upset when it's there, but now I'm driving blind again. So you guys will have me in the tunnel and I will figure out what I'm doing. Crazy Cat Lady still hasn't called me back yet, which means her phone's been in her bag. So she will call me when she starts getting annoyed about something. No offense, Crazy Cat Lady, but that's the only time that you look at your phone is to see what time it is because you're like, okay, I want to go home. So hopefully uh, I will not, that will not be an expiration period uh, before I am able to get my registration done because I was not able to switch over to the laundry and feel like a good cat, but I did make a little two minute video, which in the back of my mind, I'm like, that's gonna be the video. But like, you never know, because maybe a lot of LG people um, have OEM codes, or OE codes, not OEM. OEM is a totally different thing. That's an original equipment from the manufacturer. Um, like maybe this Tennessee guy is gonna like sue me because he's not supposed to be up here or he's like very grumpy. I don't know. Don't sue me. My truck is like a lighter version of your truck. Your car, even though it's a car and I don't like car cars, I like convertibles, I like sports cars, but not like sedans, even though my first two were sedans. Uh, a box Chevy Caprice and a bubble body Caprice. Now there's like gonna be some type of, I don't know, somebody's gonna steal my identity because I just gave too, too much information out there, whatever. Turbo Tax says that they like will protect me uh, if my identity gets stolen. So hopefully they can uh, honor that commitment in the event that somebody's like, hey, she said one of her videos, like this was her first car. Uh, but somebody's gonna get it wrong because they're gonna assume that it was like a Jeep and then I just gave them the answer. Like I could run with paranoia all day long. I can go from like the most paranoid person if I need to because daddy cat dog and like mommy cat with their own little things um, to I'm completely oblivious and someone has to point out the dumb stuff. And then I'm like, oh, once the broad picture is explained to me, then I'm like, oh, and this, and this, and this, and this, and then boom, 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 all the details. But I have been able to break myself out of the ASCII cycle of all the details by being a mom. And being a mommy cat has made it where, like, yes, I am still all about the details. However, pause for effect. Um, and I don't know who I stole that from, but I stole that from someone. Um, I realized and saw that whole can't see the forest for the trees thing and I realized that was me so anytime that I see a deficit within myself I challenge myself to basically to be better than whatever my deficit is if I can do it I'm not going to be a baseball player I'm not coordinated enough for that physically my hand-eye coordination is not great uh, there are certain things that like innately will not be corrected and that's one of those things and Mentally, 
obnoxious at times. I love you, husband Kat, so very much, but you are very obnoxious at times. Um, and that's just one of those things. I, I require, you know, a husband cat. And, and like, that's just it. Yeah, I can, I can appreciate more interesting and uh, nicer designs. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. Like, that's one of, probably one of the reasons I'm so accepting. Because, like, I don't know. I don't know why that's ever been an embarrassing thing. I think it's ridiculous that, you know, boys and girls are not treated the same in these nose. Um, when, in, when they're, like, looking at you know, physical forms. And it's like, oh, it is completely um, great for a girl to admire these things. Uh, but it is not acceptable for a boy to. I think that's a double standard that's stupid. Um, because, you know, everyone should be able to do whatever they want to do within reason, um, as long as it doesn't impact another person. And the people that need to figure out the within reason, sometimes they're like reps, so then their reasons are like ridiculous. And so then it just becomes this whole ridiculous thing where like people just go way too far on one side or way too far on the other side. And everyone, like there's a bell curve for a reason. And like, I don't know, for some reason, every time I like even peek at politics, I'm just like, this is so stupid. Because you need all the data, you need all the information to make good assessments on stuff, and there's just like, I don't know, I think there's obsessively messing with people's paranoia on either side of the, the spectrum, and catastrophizing things, and then like, I think there's a line of like, inclusion, but then like, shoving it down someone else's throat, and that's coming from someone that just openly stated a second ago that like, you know, that females are aesthetically pleasing, more aesthetically pleasing than the other ones, there you go, sorry. And you want to like label me whatever thing. I label myself as a me. I'm not good with the alphabet letters. I know that that's supposed to be derogatory. I used to be able to keep up with it. And I prided myself in trying to be really good about stuff. And a certain little someone um, explains like hand stuff to me. And I thought that was a fascinating concept. So then I like micro dived, which is very difficult for me to do. And found out that like, you know, I could fit into a lot of different little labels and things. And like, I will la I will label myself and other people can label themselves, but then you're also creating little groups for yourselves. And then we have so many little groups that like the people that are in like the standard regular groups get confused by all the subgroups and the subtopics. And they're like, well, I don't know. I'm just one of the original ones, okay? And then they get all grumpy because they don't understand. And then it becomes this whole bullying thing. And then bullying is bad. But then like the people that were bullied, bullied to the point that like the other people are now being bullies because they just don't know. It's way too complicated. There's no excuse for it. It's ridiculous. So you can poke at me. Poke at me on all these different things because like, I don't know. I'm a weirdo with like certain statistics. I shouldn't be, you know, I mean, I guess I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I was, a, I was a teen mom. And like, that was a stigma that I had to bear weight on. And like, whenever Bo went to her first school, like, no one did the math. And it was fine. And we like, did really well. And we like, made butterfly garden. And we did all these things. And we were like, you know, I did the PTA stuff. With not like super PTA stuff, but I did the PTA stuff to a certain extent. I volunteered. And then, like, we go to the next school. And there's all these snobby people, and like they did the math, and then they were just like, eh, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna be a little catty, grumpy person because I think I'm better than you. And then when they saw that I had a little fanciful house, or a big fanciful house, let's say that, and a big fanciful house with formal rooms and family rooms and a guest bedroom and a pool and a hot tub and all the fancy stuff, because we bought the biggest house that we could find that needed the most amount of work because I like to work. And I knew that I could make the box in the land very nice, even though the previous owners did not take care of the box or the land, and they were terrible because they myrtleized all these poor animals. And if I would have walked in that house with all that stuff in it, I never would have touched it. If I would have seen one picture of one giraffe, or, like, I'm not even joking. I think I have screenshots of that stuff. Oh, it was disgusting. They had myrtleized little trophies of animals all over that house. And it took a lot, like once somebody showed me, like we were already there and I was already gone into the house. And it just made me like 
sick and sad. And it was horrible. And they were really judgy people. And they said a lot of not nice stuff stuff. Because here's the thing that like I will be loud and proud about with most audience, actually all audience, because I don't care if it's somebody from Mississippi or if it's somebody from flipping Alaska or Hawaii. I haven't talked to anybody from Alaska. Um, closest, like, I don't know, other places, but not Alaska. And now I'm getting, I'm getting too caught up in the details. See, that's that thing where, like, I get caught up in the details. Anyways, I am very loud and proud about being from, I say, Biloxi, Mississippi, because I was born there, because people don't know what Ocean Springs, Mississippi is. However, pause for effect. Yes, you'll hear that a lot. It's one of my things. I've had it for a long time, as well as cool beans. However, pause for effect. As soon as I say that, being the tone that I am, I don't think it has anything to do with gender, being the tone that I am, as soon as I say that, all the isms come out, except for the sexism one. But then they don't understand that I've rationalized that all the isms live together. The racism, the sexism, the sexual orientationism, you name an ism, a religious ism, whatever, I'm adding isms to things, but they are all categorized the same. I group things together because I am a grouping person, I am a fix-it person, I am a fight for justice person. Yes, you can say that I'm tuning my own horn. I give no craps, okay? I will not be bothered if people think that I am big-headed about things that should be big-headed about. So, for some reason, Mississippi, I know the reason, but for some reason when people hear Mississippi, they think that every single person that pops out of that state must be dun 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 an ism person and they don't understand that all the isms live together in my head so if you're a racist you're probably sexist if you're a sexist you're probably a racist if you're a sexual orientationist you're probably i don't know you get the drift okay so here's my thing i have a very colorful blended family and i always have I've been able to acclimate to different environments because I am not a super judgy person. I've been called a howling, and then I've been called a local. I understand the slip of stuff, okay? I can try, and I do know how to say a lot of Hawaiian words. Like, I'm just using that as a cultural thing because, like, Hawaiians know the mainlander stuff and everything else. And when I first got there, I was a howling. And then it was explained to me that that was a derogatory word. And then it was explained to me the history of Hawaii and why they had those derogatory words. And then it was explained to me that like after a certain amount of time, because of my affiliation with locals, that I was now considered a local. And I know there's another word for it too, but I can't remember off the top of my name or at the top of my head. Mahalo, leave me alone. Um, and the blue stop signs on Kaneohe Mall and Oahu. And I, I don't know, we went to one of the other islands because Ugh, I hate to even call him number one, but because he was such a pooper that he just, I don't know, we went to another island. I can't remember if it was, I think it was Big Island. Um, and I talked to lots of guys with like the run pack stuff. And I got grumpy about them putting tape all over the cars and the center balance stuff. Like I have a lot of random knowledge about a lot of random things. And I'm just driving around literally aimlessly right now. But the big thing is that the isms are everywhere. And the more we try to teach the ism people that if they like someone that is, you know, part of, I don't know how to explain it properly, but like I have, I have associates, friends, whatever, that feel like part of that is their identity because like they bond to it because they don't have anything better to bond to. Like being an open-minded person for them because of this broad spectrum that exists makes it seem like they're going to be what they're trying to act like they are completely intolerant about or because they had a few things happen or because they didn't have exposure to other people, um, then like every time they say something in my presence, I will correct them. No matter the amount of love or care that I have for them, if they say certain things in my presence, they know they're going to be corrected. Like a mad mommy. Like, um, excuse me, did you just say that? You know, I don't like that word. Oh, I know, but blah, 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 culture, blah, 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 excuse. No, all the isms live together. And so if you value me and you are not a sexist person, then you need to start separating yourself from those isms. And eventually they get it. And eventually it changes. Eventually, eventually, eventually. What does not typically work with changing a, a pattern that is a, you know, could be a lifelong pattern or it could be like an acquired thing from trauma or whatever because you have to figure out the source. Everything medically, everything psychologically, everything hatred-wise has a source. 
the source of the pain. Figure out the source of the pain and work on repairing it. Mend it, fix it. Because it works a heck of a lot better than blasting them. Because you know what happens when I get blasted? I blast back. And I blast back pretty hard. Or, in a very rare amount of time in my life, I hide. Deep down inside of all of us is a fight or flight response. When somebody hits you, either you're going to run or you're going to hit back harder and faster. And it just depends on how much you value your life and your level of strength and your level of ability to adapt. So yeah, this is going to be one of those deep car rides that in a moment I'm going to have to like pull over because I really have no idea where I'm going because my phone overheated and it's very annoying. And I feel really, really bad and I'm very conflicted right now because I feel bad for this poor Dodge Ram. Even though it's the body style, the generation that I have negative connotations for, I feel bad for it because it seems like somebody hurt it. So even though I have negative feelings for that generation of that truck, I feel bad for the truck. It didn't ask to be made in that generation. And I don't know, this is I guess turning into some type of like metaphor, but it wasn't intended for it. It's literally people that, a few people that know me know that I do not like that generation. And there's a very specific, ah! I'm an attack. Ugh. Because there's a not nice person that did not nice stuff to me that has that generation of a truck. And even as awesome as my mommy cat was, she did not know about that stuff. Ah! And look, it keeps attacking. I think I turn here. I don't know. I'm getting away from that truck because I feel very attacked by it. Literally, with whatever pieces of stuff were coming off. Oh, it is. It's coming from the tow truck. You guys didn't see it, but I just did. Um, so, anyways, I took the wrong exit. I'm going to have to end this video. It's going to have to like, be done, and you guys aren't getting another video. All the isms live together. There's a reason why there's a saying in the South, or I've heard it in other places too, so it's not just that locale. Uh, it's easier to catch flies with honey than vinegar, I think. Um, and it's one of those things where if you have someone in your life that's a grumpy cat about things that, you know, you even just mildly believe in, like believe that they're wrong, give them some correction in a nice way. Be understanding. Be a little less judgy for the judgy people because they're probably concealing a fair amount of pain. And if it's a lack of exposure, then expose them. Not expose them, make them scared, all that stuff. I mean, like, expose them. If they're a racist, expose them to good, colorful people. Alter their view with niceness. It's very, very hard. There are people out there, I know from experience, because they're the ones that try to, like, blow me up, and they did blow up my life. It's very, very hard for people to overly dislike people that are happy unless they're just deep down really messed up but again ask the questions deep dive in the conversation find out what the harm is someone somewhere harmed them and we don't know about the person that harmed them so it's not this whole good guy bad guy thing and now you guys make me like change my wordage because I could have said black and white thing because I normally use the black and white thing I like contrast I do oil red bronze stark white and warm caramel. That's my color palette. And again, I guess that could be a metaphor too, but like, I just love it. I think it looks really good together. Um, and it's contra It's because of the contrast. So if you guys are looking to make the lives of everyone around you better, stop being so grumpy with one another. Like try, try to like see someone else's perspective, find that root cause of that problem. And you know, Challenge yourself to be the change that you want to see in the world. I know that's someone's quote. I literally have it in different places. But, like, be the change you want to see in the world by trying to understand people and understand their perspective and get out of your little micro box and get into their little micro box to see what caused them to get into that box and box up their emotions and then blast anyone that even gets close to them. Because I'm telling you what, as someone that really, you know, loves and cares about some people that like have some really not nice things to say about a lot of not nice things. I can see where some of it happens and I try to fix and repair it as I can and they're all better for it. Are they fixed? No. But is anyone really fixed? No. Is anyone perfect? No. 
So we have to find the imperfections and start working to, to make things a little bit better. Imperfectly perfect. Bye guys.